What's going on today, YouTube? Today I'm covering my Vivi voice assistant project. Here's a quick little demonstration of it. Hey there. I'm listening. Today I had a long day at work and I'm pretty tired, but I feel like I fulfilled a lot of things. That's good to hear, but I had an even longer day at work and managed to fulfill even more tasks. Plus, I still have enough energy to hit the gym after this conversation. Oh, fancy you say that because I also hit the gym pretty hard after this, after work. Well, that's impressive, but I actually hit the gym twice today. Once before work and once after. I guess some people are just more motivated than others. Funny you say that because I just hit it three times. Maybe even four. Haha, <laughs> good one. But seriously, I think you might be exaggerating a bit. I mean, I'm all for staying active and healthy. But there's a limit to what the human body can handle. You don't want to overdo it and risk hurting yourself. But I did the gym more than you did. Okay, okay, you win this round. But let's not forget that there's more to life than just the gym. I'm sure there are areas where I excel that you might not be as strong in. It's all about finding balance and focusing on our own strengths and passions. Don't you agree? Quit. And so that's just a quick example. Who do you think won that exchange? But anyways, I'm going to show you how you can get it downloaded, how you can work on it as a developer, and then how you can just run it as an executable file if you just want to download and run the voice assistant. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, what we're going to go through first is the developing part of it. So if you just want to run it as an executable, head on over to the end of the video. That's where I'll show that. But to do this, to follow along here, um, you're going to need to, you're going to need Python on your computer, you're going to need Git, and then some type of IDE. I recommend you do VS Code, and I'm going to link down below in the description on how you can get all of those. However, I want to use a different Python version, so we're going to, I'm going to show you how you can do that today. So first head on over to a blank browser, and we're going to go ahead and type in Python. Links are going to be down below in the description, and once we're here, we're going to head down, down over to 3.10. So we can go to 3.10. Scroll all the way down to this page and then click the Windows Installer 64 bit. And then we're going to go ahead and open it. So it's going to download and then we're going to open it and then I'll come back once that's done. Alrighty, so it's open. I've opened it up and we're going to go ahead and add Python exe path. Click install now and then it's going to install on our computer. All right, 3.10 is finished. Go ahead, just click disable path limit. Doesn't really matter too much and then close it. So that is going to be Python. Um, I'm going to assume that you have Git already downloaded and VS Code from that previous video. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the repository. So here we are in the repository. This is my Vivi repository. I have a description on how you can use it here if you just want to read it. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just do a Git clone of it first. So I'm assuming you have Git installed in your computer. So we're going to go ahead, go click code here, click the copy button here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open up a file browser and find where we want to download it to. So I'm going to go to the desktop and create a new folder. Uh, so go to new folder and we're going to going to call this. We're just going to call this code. So once we have that, let's go ahead, double click into it. And then when you're in here, we're going to go ahead and do shift right click and then it's going to open up a PowerShell window here. So PowerShell is going to look like this here. Um, don't worry, it's just a command line interface, nothing too crazy. Um, and once we're in here, you're going to type exactly what I have here, git clone. And then since we copied the GitHub link, we're going to go ahead and paste that in here and it's going to download. Alrighty, so it's all finished here. So we can go ahead and close out of the PowerShell window and let's go ahead, head on over into Vivi. All right. So since this part of the video is going to be for developers, um, I'm going to show that first. You can follow along if you don't know any Python, because I'm just going to show you how you can use the class and how you can set it up. You just have to follow step by step on what I do. With that aside, we're going to go ahead and head over to the Python script. Here we have a requirements text file and we're going to go ahead and use this later on. But it basically just has all of the um, pip options that we need to install. What we're going to head over to first is the assistant tab and then we're going to head into one of these scripts and that is going to be assistant P. When you first open it up, it's going to give you this window here. If you haven't opened things up in Visual Studio, I'm going to click Visual Studio Code and then click always use this app to open PY files, Python files and then click OK. We have this here and this is perfect. But um, what I prefer to do is actually open up the entire folder inside of VS Code. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. Go over to open folder and then we're going to go over to the folder here. So um, if we just go to your desktop or wherever you put it, go into the folder, click the name of the repository and then select it. It's going to open up in here. 
in order to edit the code, you'll have to trust the authors. So trust the authors here. And then we have access to everything in this left hand corner. Uh, we got the assistance, all of that. You're in it, read me, build. And so before we do anything, we're going to set up a virtual environment. And that is pretty easy to do in VS Code. So you're going to go ahead and click Control Shift P. That's going to bring this up here. You're going to type in Python and then you're going to do create environment down here. Then you're going to click VENV virtual environment and then you're going to click the 3.10 version of Python for your interpreter. As I was saying that requirements uh, text file is important. So we're going to install all of the requirements we need. Uh, so go ahead and click requirements.txt, click OK and then it's going to create the environment. The important thing about virtual environments is it allows us to work on this project without affecting any other projects. So if you use a, another repository that I have on my GitHub, it could interfere with it, which is why we're gonna do a virtual environment. So we don't have packages clashing for different versions. All right, and so once we have the virtual environment done, it's going to show down here that it's 3.10 and it's gonna see .vnv. So you'll see that we have here, that it is selected as our interpreter. So just make sure that this is the option uh, 3.10 VNV and we're going to be uh, on our way. And you may be wondering how you can open it back up in the virtual environment if you close the project. So we're just going to go. I'm just going to show you that real quick. So here I closed out of the project in order to open it back up. You just have to go back into that folder and select the folder that you're in and it'll auto select the virtual environment as you can see down here. And in here we're going to go and click assistance. And then we're going to go back down to assistant P down here. So, so here is the entire script that allows the assistant to basically work. So I'm going to go through each part of these just to give a overview on what it is. This beginning part right here is going to be your imports for the packages that you need in order for the script to run. So these two right here are locally uh, defined inside a folder. So these are packages that I just built um, for the assistant to run. And then you have some variable names that you can change here. So folder name is going to be the folder name that the conversations get stored to. So in this case, it's going to be assistant P. Personality is going to be the name of the personality that you set. And those are the prompts that you have inside of the prompts folder. So if we go over to prompts here, go over to person, go over to assistant p.txt. Um, we have a text for a personality that uh, we want to set for the assistant. So going back to assistant p, um, that's your personality. Then for the voice name, this is actually going to be your 11 labs voice. So I'll show you how you can get that 11 labs API key. But basically, this just sets up the voice. This variable is to use 11 labs and this one is to use OpenAI's whisper. This block right here is basically just checking to see whether or not it's an executable file or if it's a script file. So this is important when you build the script out in order to make an executable file. And this right here is just getting all of the path directories you need in order for ChatGPT to work. And then here we have a instantiation of the ChatGPT class where all of the magic happens for the chatting. We pass it the personality directory, we pass it um, a keys directory, and then we pass it a voice name below it. And then lastly, the thing below it is going to be the method that we call from the chatbot um, class. And that is going to be assistant P in this case. And here's a description on what it does. Um, I'm not going to read through the entire thing, but basically we just pass it the folder name directory, um, whether or not we want to use 11 labs and then whether or not we want to use whisper. So, so that is how I have the assistant.py um, set up. So how do you get this set up if you just want to use it as a script? Uh, let's go ahead and run through a test example for that right now. So let's just go ahead, open up a new text file. And what I recommend doing is just going over to one of the pre-made scripts already and then copy and pasting the imports. So we're going to do that here. So we're going to copy and paste the imports and then we're going to go ahead and save it so we don't have these squiggly lines here. So just go over to save as make sure you're in the assistance folder and we're going to call it test. So it's now going to be called test.py and what we can know. And then the other things we can do are copy the variable names here from the other script and copy and paste it into here. And then uh, we can skip this 
um, building block as we don't actually need it if we're just running it as a script. But what we are going to use from that script block is we're going to need our script directory. So what we're going to do is uh, create a variable called script directories, which is dir, and we're going to do os path os dot path dot dir name so we can get the path of this script. So we're going to do os dot path dot absolute path. And then we're going to do the name of the file. So that is basically just going to return the path of the script. And you know, you can just copy and paste this from the assistant.p um, if you want. And then I'm going to now show you um, some other things that we'll need to get in here as well. So we're going to need three paths. We're going to need a folder name directory. We're going to need a personality directory, and then we're going to need a keys directory. So you can see that all of those are inside of assistant P here. Um, we're using this, but to set that up here, uh, we're going to use this um, function that's inside of utils and it takes in a couple of things. So it takes in a script directory, folder name, personality, and then a system change. We're not going to use system change though. So, to do that, all we have to do is create some new variables. So we'll do folder name underscore dir. Uh, we'll do a personality directory and then we'll do a keys. We'll just leave it as keys. And then what we're now going to do is use that function from the utils package and we're going to call get file paths. And you can see that it has kind of like a description on like what you can feed it. Um, and so we're just going to go ahead and name uh, we're going to feed it the script directory you need to pass it the script directory first so that it knows where you are in relevance to the files and then let's go ahead and do our folder name and then we're going to do in the personality so it's okay you don't have to fully understand what is happening here you just have to understand that this is how you get the file paths for the personalities that you need and the folder names that you need so once you have those, we're going to instantiate a new ver uh, a new a new object of the chat GPT class, which handles everything. So if we go over to the package, um, the magical tool that handles everything, it is this chat GPT class right here. And we need to instantiate it with these parameters. So let's hop back on over to here and let's call this chat. Uh, we'll just call it chat bot. And so once you have it, once you have a new variable called chatbot, uh, you're going to instantiate it to ChatGPT class. And then inside, you're going to need to feed it some variables. So it tells you intelligently here, it needs a personality, a keys, a voice name, and then a device index. So we're going to go ahead and set those right now. So personality is going to be equals to um, personality directory. So that's why we set this directory here. Let's do a comma new line and then going to do a keys is going to be set equal to keys. That's what we have right here. And then we're going to do one more and we're going to do folder. Oops, sorry. And then um, that's not what we need. We need voice name here. So we're going to set voice name equals voice name. So we're going to do voice name and that voice name is what we have set up here, which is rem in this case. So that is going to be how you set up the object. And then we're going to use that to use one of the methods inside of the chat GPT class. So in order to do that, we're just going to use the same namesake here and we're going to do chatbot dot. And then it gives me all of the options that I can do in here. So. Um, because I know what I want to do, I want to base it off of assistant P. We're going to go ahead and use assistant P. And then once again, you can see all of the different parameters we can pass it. So we're going to do a little bit of um, a different instantiation. We're not going to use um, three. We're going to use all five of them just to show you how you can pass it different parameters or whatever parameters it needs. Okay. So once again, first one, we need the save folder name. So we have the folder name. Um, right here, uh, and then it's going to be folder name dir. So save folder name equals folder name dot dir. And you might be wondering how I'm able to just enter these things in. Well, it automatically will pull up these names here, and then I can just use the arrows to choose between them and then click enter to quickly enter that in. So, comma, the next thing that we need is a keyword. So keyword we're going to say 
hello. So we're going to use hello instead of hey for this example. And then um, the next thing that it needs is going to be use 11 labs. So this one is pretty simple. You just do use 11 labs equals use 11 labs. We use EL. The next one is use whisper. Simple again, just do use whisper equals use whisper. And that's what I have up here. So you just change the value of what's being passed as a parameter by changing the value up here. So that's all that is happening here by me setting it equal to um, the variables I have here. And the reason that I'm able to do this is because I have variables already set inside of the class for these names, which is why those names are matching up. And then there's one more and that is going to be timeout equals a certain amount of time. So let's say that we want to time out the conversation after 10 seconds. We would put this to 10 and that would um, time it out. And then once, if you want to know what happens or what these variables are, you know, the arguments, you can always read it by hovering over it with the IntelliSense, or you can um, right click into it and then go to definition to see the definition inside of the class. So that is how you can get it set up for, um, for a new Python script and with some different parameters. Um, you could technically change this to anything. So you could say this is voice, voice assist. And then you would just have to change this down here to voice assist as well. So that can change to whatever you need it to be. We're gonna leave it at chatbot just to keep the same namesake. And that is gonna be that. And so I know if you're a beginner in Python, if you don't know anything about code, a lot of that would have just gone over your head. And so, if you have any questions about it, I would just recommend that you feed some things into ChatGPT to figure out how Python code works. So, you know, to understand these, you should have a little bit of a basis on how Python coding works. And, you know, ChatGPT is a great tool to learn how you can do that. And now we're just going to go ahead and run the script as we have it. All right. So here we have the script now. It is all up and um, it is all up and coded. We've got all of the stuff we need set. Let's just go ahead and run this and see how this can work. So we're going to go ahead and click run up here, start debugging, and then we're going to go over to Python file. What we're going to get here is an error because there are no keys set. And so you may be wondering, like, what the heck happened? We set up everything correctly. Um, you're going to need to set up an API key and get all of the API keys. So that's what we're going to work on next. So before we do that, we're going to go ahead and go over to this left side here and go into keys examples dot txt um, simply what we're going to do is click on it, right click it, and then we're going to rename it as keys.txt. And then there are two keys we need to get. Um, we need to get 11 labs key and a chat GPT key. We don't need an 11 labs key if you're not using 11 labs, but you know, if you have an 11 labs key, you'll need to do that. So we're going to head on over to browser and let's head on over to 11 labs first. Okay. So we're in 11 labs. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in real quick. All right. And here we are in 11 labs. I'm not going to show you how you can make voices or anything like that in this video. I'm just going to show you how you can select it. So in your settings here, you're going to have a, well, first you go to the speech synthesis uh, menu up here. In your speech synthesis area, you're going to have a bunch of voices you can choose and you're going to want to make sure um, the name that you put inside of the script matches what you have here. So um, it's a capital in this case. So if we go back on over to the script, it should be capital as well here. So capital R in REM. So you're going to head on over to your account. Then you're going to go ahead and click on profile. And then you're going to click on this API uh, key right here. Now you're going to click on this eyeball. I'm not going to click it. So um, but you guys click it and then you go ahead and right click and copy. And then you're going to go ahead and bring that on over into this keys.txt and then paste it. So it's going to be something inside of here and you want to make sure it's within these two quotations. So that's your 11 labs key. And let's head on over now to the open AI key and get that one as well. So so you're going to see this screen here. Once again, everything is going to be in the description where you can just click the links for how to get to these pages. And then we're going to go ahead and click log in. All right. So I'm all logged in here. And what you're going to do is head on over to your account here. You're going to go ahead to view API keys. And then you're going to go ahead and create an API key right here that you can use for the chatbot. So um, you can just click create new API key. You're going to copy this over to uh, you're going to click the copy, copy it over, and then you're going to 
paste it inside of here for your GPT key. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one, um, which you can just do by clicking the trash can here in case it gets exposed. And then that is going to be that. You do need to do one more thing though, and that is set up, you know, an account for billing as this does require access to their API, but it is pretty cheap. It is basically cost. It basically costs a quarter of a cent in order to get 750 words. So that is pretty cheap in my honest opinion. Um, and you you probably use like a dollar per, mo per month if you're using the assistant uh, continuously, but that is how you get this set up and now that we've got our api key set up we're gonna go ahead and run the script once again so go ahead and click run or f5 i just clicked f5 and you're gonna hear a beep and then you're gonna say something like hey or in this case we would say hello however since i am running this on a virtual computer it is not actually going to run so let me just go ahead and bring this over to my main pc to show you how it works all right so we're in the main pc over here a couple of things are going to happen i'm going to run it i'm going to say hello it's going to instantiate and then it's going to say i'm listening and then that's when you can start talking so i'm going to show how it'll it'll time out after a certain amount of time and i'm going to lower this to five just to make it quicker and then I'm going to show how you can be instantiated. So this is going to be a quick demonstration on the script that we just made from the um, from the class that I have here. So F5 to run it. Hello. I'm listening. Could you give me a recipe for a quick sandwich? Sure. What type of sandwich are you in the mood for? Do you have any specific ingredients in mind? So as you can see there, it just timed out. Hello. I'm listening. Yeah, let's use roast beef and white bread. Great. Here's a quick and easy recipe for a roast beef sandwich. Ingredients. And so I'm going to go ahead and end it there. But here are all of the ingredients that it has given it to me. And it will read all of that out loud. Um, but as you saw there, it or it timed out and I had to re-instantiate it by saying hello. It went back into the conversation. So that is what this assistant here does. So that's a quick way on how you can use the assistant P method to get a script up and running. Um, I will go ahead and show you how you can make some modifications to the chat GPT class to make the microphone a little bit more sensitive. And let's go ahead and jump into that right now. So click on the chat GPT class, right click and go to definition. And it's going to bring us to the GPT assistant PY. So inside of here, if you want to change the model that is being used for chat GPT, you can change this right here inside of uh, self uh, GPT model. You can scroll down to here to set the energy threshold for the microphone. I have it set as 1000 for me, but you could set it. The default is 300, but I found that was too sensitive. So I set it to 1000 and then you can have a dynamic energy threshold. Um, you can set this to true. That basically just adjusts the energy threshold on the go. I recommend you leave it at false and then you know, once again, I said there are all these other things down below that you can mess with if you want to get into more of the coding side of things. And then one more thing you can if you want to use the 11 labs voice, just set it to true. So with all of the code out of the way, I'm going to show you how you can run it as just an executable file if you're just interested in running the script and not doing any coding. So this is going to be no code, how we can just run the scripts and how we can get that up and running. So. We're going to go ahead and download it. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and head back on over to my GitHub repository. And we're going to go ahead and um, head on over to my releases. So if you scroll down, you can you can see this link right here. You can click releases or you can go over to this tags option over here and click it. So I just clicked on the tabs option or tags option right here. And it's going to bring me to all of the releases that I've done. And then I'm going to go ahead and click V 0.2.0. This is going to be my most recent one. Um, and you're going to go ahead and download Vivi.zip. So just go ahead, click it and then save it. We're going to go ahead and save it to the desktop. And then once we have it saved, we're going to go ahead and extract it. So go ahead and click extract all. And then we're going to extract it. Alrighty. So here we are. We have it open up here and inside of this folder we're going to go ahead and and inside of this folder we need to set up our api keys so inside of this keys at examples you have two options here your 11 labs key and then your open ai key so to do that first we're going to change the name of the file so right click it click rename and we're going to call it keys 
Once we're in here, if you saw the earlier part of the tutorial, you probably set up your API key already, but I'm going to go ahead and just reset it. Um, so you want to go over to 11 labs and sign up for an account and then go over to your profile, click on profile, and then you have your API key here. So you're going to go ahead and click this eyeball here to show the API key, and then you're going to paste it into this option here. Make sure you leave the quotes. So there should be quotes around it. Next, you want to head on over to OpenAI. Links are uh, links are all in the description and you're going to go ahead and log in, create an account, and then you're going to go to view API keys. And then you're going to go ahead and create a new secret key that you can paste into there as well. So you just copy and paste this into here. And so whatever that API key is, it's going to be set here. And that is going to be your setup for that. I'm just going to revoke the key and delete it so you guys can't use it. And then if you're using this again, you're going to need to set it up as a build account in order to use the API in order to use the API. It's really cheap, 750 words for a quarter of a cent. So uh, you don't have to worry about being charged too much if you're using that. OK, perfect. So let's say you have your API key set up. Everything should be good and running. So what we're going to do is we're going to run one of the scripts. And when you first run a script, you'll probably get something like this is uh, you'll probably have to search for. You can click yes or no here um, and it'll open up the window here. So in order to use my microphone, I had to head over to my main PC. But let's click that same script here and we're going to get a first prompt that says, are you using an 11 labs voice? We're going to say, let's just go ahead and say yes. And this is assuming you have set an 11 labs voice key. So we're going to say yes. And then whatever name we have here, we're going to use. In this case, I'm going to use me. So you have to make sure it is capitalized if uh, you're using 11 labs, capitalized correctly because it is case sensitive. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. It's going to initialize. Hey there, I'm listening. What is your name? My name is OpenAI. How can I assist you today? And then we're going to go ahead and quit. So there's a quick little demonstration. That is actually the voice that I made for myself. Um, and that is the command you just heard me say at the end, quit will exit out of the um, executable file. And so if you say quit in any of your input, it's going to exit out. So. Uh, I probably need to change the logic of that a little bit in case you guys want to quit out of it some other way. But further than that for now, if you have quit inside of uh, whatever you say to it, it's going to quit out of it. So that is assistant P with voice. And here's how it might look if you just want to run it without the 11 labs key. So so you may notice that it is slow to load up sometimes. So if you just drag the right side of the screen, it'll boot it up. Um, and so we're just going to click no here and then it's going to beep and then it's going to allow for me to say, hey, Hey there. I'm listening. Quit. And we exited it out there. OK, cool. So you have all of these exec executable files inside of the folder here. Um, and so they'll run just as they are. And as you can see, here's a new folder called conversation. So inside of here, you have assistant P where you can take a look at the conversations. And, you know, here are here's what it did. So it set up the conversation here. If you want to modify how it actually responds, well, you're going to need to go into this prompts area right here and then change what the prompts are. So whatever name of the executable file you have, you can modify how it responds inside of the prompts here. Now you have to make sure that the names stay the same. So in this case, let's say we want to modify one up exe. We're going to go ahead, go to prompts. We're going to go ahead, go into one up.txt. And then we would just modify what it says here. Currently, it says immediately role play as someone who always has to be a little bit better than me. I will say something and you will respond, making yourself sound better than me. So that is the one up txt um, instructions. And it's it's kind of funny. I, I like that one. That one's kind of a troll bot. And that is how you can modify it. That's really all the modification that you need to do for those scripts. And now I'm going to go ahead and run through what each script actually does, what each one does differently and why I have them separated. So I'm just going to do a quick spike notes of all of these assistants. The first one is chat. Basically, you can just instantiate it and talk to it. So you just say, hey, and then you're able to talk to it infinitely. It'll just keep going. So, you know, you have to quit out of it manually. The interview one, uh, you can have you can set it up to interview you interview you in whatever topic you want to. So you set up the prompt inside of prompts. You give the interview bot the instructions and then it'll interview you. 
This one starts off by asking you questions first instead of you in instantiating it. So it just jumps right into the interview. The next one is assistant and there is assistant and there's assistant P. Assistant acts as kind of like the traditional smart assistant where you instantiate it with a word like a keyword like hey and then it'll run into the conversation part of it and then it'll stop after a certain amount of time of having not heard anything so five seconds or whatnot in this case assistant p is a little bit different than assistant because assistant p stands for assistant persistent so i guess that's a little bit of a tongue twister there but this one maintains and retains the information that you told it earlier so after this one stops listening, it'll remember what you had asked it before and you can build up upon that. And what I mean is it, it'll only remember what you asked it before in the same iteration or the same script. So if you close out of the exe or the executable file, it'll forget what had happened in previous conversations. So this one is good if you want to just have it looped in like the background if you want to um, ask it questions and build upon those questions. Um, whereas, you know, this one might be something that you just run in the background in case you want to ask it a one off question, kind of like how you do with Google. You just ask it a quick question and it'll respond in that same fashion. And so those are the four assistant slash methods that I have inside of Vivi. And, you know, each one has a Python file and executable file pertaining to it. You may see that there are other names in here as well, such as it, you have Roleplay EXE and then you also have One Up EXE. So, like I said, those ones are, um, you know, those ones are kind of just more fun ones. Um, in this case, One Up uses One Up uses Assistant, so it doesn't remember um, what had happened previously. Whereas Roleplay uses Chat, so this one will just continue chatting with you. So, once again, you can set those. Um, you can set how they respond to you by going over into your prompts folder and then selecting it and editing the text. So, okay, so that is how you can get started with my Vivi project. If you just want to get it up and running, you can just run the EXEs or if you want to start doing some development on it, some enhancement, you can jump over into the GPT Assistant Python file. And so that is what today's video is going to be. If you have any feature requests, if you have any issues, please, um, open up a new issue or a feature request on GitHub. You can do all of that with the um, issues tab. I have a tutorial down, you know, if you want to know how you can open up GitHub issues in the description, but that is going to be today's video. So once again, thank you guys today for watching. I'll see you in a future video and uh, good luck out there, everybody, and see you later.